Uh, welcome everyone to Fix a Fair, bringing you resources to your home through the power of the internet. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Wing. I'm one of the coordinators of the Fix Affairs, which are uh, City of Portland, Oregon community resource events. Uh, and with that, I'd like to welcome our guest, Heather from Portland Farmers Market. Thanks for joining us, Heather. Yes, hello everyone. Thank you, Wing, so much um, for having us as part of the Fix It Fair. Um, everyone out there, my name is Heather Morrill. I work for Portland Farmers Market and we run five farmers markets seasonally. PSU Farmers Market is our year-round location, so it's open right now every Saturday, all year long. Um, I'm also a member of Cook First Portland, and so we're partnering with Cook First um, to bring these demos to you. Um, at Cook First Portland, we are cultivating the Portland home cooking community. We want to inspire you to cook more, um, get you some tools, share stories. We want you to participate just as much in like hands-on um, demos and events and activities when we're able to gather in person again. Um, but mostly we want you to not worry so much about the recipe. It's okay to go off script, um, make a dish your own, share it with others, enjoy. Um, we've got a website, cookfirstpdx.org, and that's where you'll be able to find the recipes that I demonstrate today. You can also follow Cook First on Instagram. It's cookfirstpdx is the handle. And very soon, in just a moment, we're going to watch a short two and a half minute video on how to use um, Double Up Food Bucks at the farmer's market. It's a snap match program. And then we've got a 20 minute demo um, featuring a couple different varieties of squash and then three ways to easy ways to prepare and cook delicata squash at home. And again, you can find those pizzas and recipes at cookfirstpdx.org. And I'll drop some additional information into the chat as we go. And I'll be back at the end um, to answer any questions that you have. So thank you everyone for being here. Take it away, Wing. All right, I'm here to talk about how you can use your Oregon Trail card to shop farmer's markets this winter. That'd be PSU farmer's market on Saturdays at the Portland State University campus, but many other winter market locations in the state. You could find all of them at doubleuporegon.org. And what happens at the farmer's market is you're able to take your SNAP benefits from your card and the market will provide a SNAP match. The SNAP match comes in the form of Double Up Food Buck currency. So what you'd wanna do is grab your card, find the information booth, where the folks will be able to slide your card and remove benefits from your card. The benefits that come off of your card will come in the form of $1 tokens, and these you can think of as your benefits. Anything you could buy in the grocery store, um, with SNAP, you can buy in the farmer's market with SNAP. So that'd be fruits and vegetables, but also a bottle of kombucha, a loaf of bread, um, a pastry to take home and eat. Those are the things that you can purchase with your SNAP benefits in the farmer's market. Additionally, what's going to happen at the information booth is up to $10, they will provide a SNAP match. And the SNAP match is a free extra amount of money up to ten dollars per week that comes in the form of double up food bucks and double up food bucks on the back side of them you can see this list and you can also read about it at doubleuporegon.org these double up food bucks are for fresh fruits and vegetables but that includes mushrooms and beans and herbs in the springtime vegetable starts and raw and unprocessed nuts. So Double Up Food Bucks is for more fresh fruits and vegetables. It helps support the farmers. It's a match of free $10 for you to go with the money that you pull off of your Oregon Trail card. And you could do that again at many farmer's market locations year round. Um, but if you wanted to look up the list, you go to doubleuporegon.org. All right, today we are talking about and we are cooking up um, winter squash and I have a couple different varieties here 
um, that I like the most, that will be used in different ways. Um, I'm gonna talk through them, but what we're gonna cook with is the delicata squash. And this is just a much larger and a much smaller delicata squash. Um, something that I really like about it is just how versatile it is. So we're gonna talk about three different ways to cook a delicata squash. Um, the, it's bred so that the skin is edible, which I think just makes it really wonderful and simple and is a part of it being versatile. Um, and you can find them in different color variations and all sorts of different sizes. So if I'm just me as a single person, I like getting just smaller delicata squash because this is going to be one meal. Um, this would be cooking for multiple people, right? So it's something that I like about delicata squash and that's what we'll cook with. But I wanted to talk about a couple other favorites that you'll find at the Winter Farmer's Market. Um, there's the butternut squash, um, very classic for cutting up and cubing and roasting and including in winter salads or just as a side dish with some other roasted vegetables. Um, a butternut squash is always a great pick. This is a uh, butternut squash on the smaller side. Again, I'm just buying a smaller squash because I'm only feeding myself. Um, if I was going to make butternut squash soup, which is something that I do, um, I might buy a much larger um, squash to roast and put into soup. Um, a more recent um, squash that you may be familiar with if you're shopping at the farmer's market but otherwise may not have seen is the honey nut. Um, significant, this is a pretty big one. They don't get a lot bigger than this. They are smaller than its relative, the butternut squash, but a um, honey nut is darker, a little bit wider, right? It doesn't have the neck of the butternut squash um, and is bred to be sweeter and has a flavor to me in the ones that I've had um, more like a pumpkin. Um, so again, something you might wanna roast on a sheet pan with other vegetables or put and or put into a hearty winter salad. Um, and there's the red curry squash that I just wanted to mention um, quickly because it's great for muffins or quick breads. So anyone who's baking out there, this is a great option for a squash. You're gonna cut open and roast and then scoop out the insides to bake with. And at the farmer's market, the wonderful thing is you're talking to the people oftentimes who grew your food. So you can, based on what you're going to do, you can ask um, what type of squash would be best. And the farmer or the person working at the farmer's market for the farmer is most likely gonna know and have some tips and tricks for you um, as far as how you wanna use the squash. They can offer some suggestions. So here's my little baby delicata. It's like single serving. Um, I'm gonna hold it really strong. Try to find like the flattest side of it so it's not gonna wiggle around on me. And I am just gonna cut it right in half. I've got a pretty good knife, so I was able to do that. If um, the delicata has a, has a stem on top, you just wanna make a cut and cut off the stem before cutting it in half. Um, but here is my delicata squash. I've got the seeds inside and I am going to scoop out the seeds just right into my compost bowl. Whatever you've got in the kitchen, right? We'll make it work. Um, and I'm not scooping out a lot of flesh. I'm just, there's still a little bit of the strings inside. I'm perfectly fine with that. Not squeamish about it. I'm just scooping out the seeds. Uh, they're going into my compost, but um, like pumpkin seeds that you may have done with a jack-o-lantern, um, you can also, of course, roast up any squash seeds. So um, sometimes I might save these and keep them and roast them up. Um, just have them as a snack or add to another dish. So I've got my cleaned out little delicata squash and I'm just going to prepare it most simply. This I had the stem in it, so I'm gonna discard it. I'm gonna cut it into half moons and the smaller I cut my squash, the quicker it's gonna cook, right? So I'm doing about um, half inch, sorry, quarter inch 
little half moons. I've got the flat side of the squash facing the cutting board so it's not going to slip away from me. Just go all the way down the squash and get it on the pan. Here's my hand full of half moons. Um, and cook up as much or as little as you want. I'm going to set this squash aside just since I'm showing you these, but you know, if you have a big delicata squash, cut it all into half moons, depending on serving size, how many folks you're feeding. Um, just straight onto the pan, I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of oil, sprinkle a little bit of salt, and grind a little bit of pepper. I didn't mention it, but my oven is preheating. It's on 450. So it's pretty hot. And I'm going to take that olive oil, salt and pepper, I'll come around and just toss with my hand. I don't mind. And it's really easy to see when you've coated all your little half moons. They're glistening. They've got their salt and pepper on them. You can do a whole sheet full or however many you want to serve yourself. And these are going to go into the oven. Um, they're going to get caramelized and brown. I slice them so thinly. I'm thinking this will take about 15 minutes. We'll pop them in there and I'll let you know when they come out, how long it took. I'm going to wait for those delicatas to cook. Alright, we're going to grab our half moon roasted delicata squash out of the oven. These were in there for a little, for about 12 minutes. Remember we cut them really thin um, and they've got some caramel caramelization. On, their, on the bottom of them. They've roasted and turned a little bit brown, and so they're ready to eat. Um, and it, I was gonna say, because we cut them so thin, they cooked in about 12 minutes. If they were thicker slices, they're gonna take a little bit longer, um, but you can always stab one and take a taste. And those are great. Um, delicata squash, you can eat the skin. Super simple and versatile. Um, just sprinkle, drizzled with some olive oil, salt and pepper, and those are ready to be a side dish. Um, the next thing that we'll talk about is making, is another way to make a delicata squash. That was a really quick roasting of it. We've still got our whole delicata squash here. Um, remember, I like, I like the small ones because I'm doing, making a single serving just for one person. And in our oven, I've got a half of a delicata squash, just like this one, that's been roasting. And it's going to serve as the vehicle. It's really hot right now, right? I just pulled it out. It's going to serve as our bowl to make a stuffed squash, and I'll show it to you in just a second. Let me have it give it the opportunity to cool down um, while I talk about what I did. There's another way. Um, if you're at home and you, you don't have an oven, something that I've always thought is very cool is it's simple to cook a small squash in the microwave oven. So I've cut this one open, cut this one in half. Um, I need to scoop out the seeds. I'll put them into my compost bowl. I could save the seeds if I wanted to roast them like pumpkin seeds, have a little snack. I've got a nice clean scoop, but I'm not too worried about there being some strings. Um, and at this point, if I wanted to put this into the oven or the microwave, um, I just want to make sure I want to check my dish, right? And make sure that it's microwave safe. If I was going to put it into the oven, I'd want to make sure it was oven safe. 
But what I'm going to do with the vessel that I pick, this dish is microwave safe, I'm going to take my scooped delicata squash and put it flat side down. And this is a pretty shallow plate, but it will work that if I take some water, I put in this bowl, I'm going to, a little bit's going to spill and that's okay. I put water onto this plate and it's creating a seal around the squash. It's hard to see because it's water on a white plate, but there's a very thin layer of water in the bottom of this dish um, that's creating a seal around the squash. I'm going to pop this half of a squash um, into the microwave after I give it a couple little pierces with a fork. It's still hard, right? I haven't cooked it, but I'm able to take my fork and pierce some holes into it to let steam escape. Um, I'm going to take this squash I'm going to put it into a microwave oven. This squash is very small, so I'm going to start out with three minutes um, and then give it a test with a fork, poke it, and give it another 60 seconds if needed. As soon as your fork can very cleanly go into the squash, it's ready to eat. Remember, this is a delicata, so it has a very thin skin. It's bread so that you're able to eat it. We're going to be able to eat this whole squash when it's done in the microwave oven. Then three minutes, try three minutes, um, and then another about 60 second increments until it's finished. Make sure you've got a microwave safe plate. Um, that's a wonderful way you could then just cut it up or eat it with a fork. Um, and you could do that with really any type of squash. A delicata is a very quick cooking squash. A bigger squash is gonna have to go a lot longer, um, but you can, you can, Play that gauge on the size of your squash and the type. Definitely recommend a delicata as a quick cooking microwave squash. Um, and so now, um, to set to set that microwave option aside, I've got a half of a delicata squash that I cooked in the oven, and it's going to be a stuffed squash. It's still. I'm not going to grab the vessel yet. It's still hot but I, um, my fork very cleanly um, pierced this delicata squash and it's now a little bowl that I'm gonna fill with a stuffing. Um, so the squash is mostly cooked. You're aiming for it to be about half cooked. Um, I am going to, again, not touch it because it's too hot. I'm gonna set it on my baking dish. My baking dish is cooled down I'm gonna take off my half moons. We're making squash these three simple ways. Pull my half moons. I'm gonna use the same dish that I just baked my half moons on. I've got my delicata squash um, half cooked. It was in the oven, again, still at 450 um, for about 10 minutes. So I could pierce it with a fork but it's not too soft yet. I'm gonna prepare a filling to go inside of it. So I've got most of my ingredients are already ready. We're doing that fancy cooking show situation where some things happened off camera. Um, I've got some wild rice. You could use any type of rice that you like or prefer. Uh, making a stuffed squash is a great option for leftover rice. So this was leftover from a meal the other night and I'm gonna use it to stuff a squash. Brown rice would work just as well. Um, quinoa is another grain that you could put into a stuffed squash. I've got some chopped nuts. Um, walnuts or hazelnuts is something that you could get at the farmer's market this type of year, time of year. I've got some pecans and you could toast them on the oven. Uh, or on the stove if you wanted to. You could give them a little bit of a toast. And I already sauteed um, half of a very small onion. I've got that here in my bowl. You know, look at the recipes for proportions. I'm gonna be eyeballing things. I've also got some cranberries. And then I'm going to cut some apple. This is something I really like to include in a stuffed squash. And I'm also gonna cut some celery. So I cleaned this celery rib. I'm just gonna cut it into nice bite sizes. If you like stuffing, um, 
like with bread. You can make a filling for a stuffed squash with bread as well. And it's really is, making a stuffed squash is really a choose your own adventure. You wanna make things to your taste. You wanna make something that you're going to enjoy and you're going to eat. I like the crunch of it. It's nice to have something crunchy, something savory. We can talk about the different ingredients as they go in. Um, let me also prepare some apple, the nice tight tart bite of a green apple is a good addition to any stuffing, whether it be with bread or with rice. Great use of leftover rice. I can't say that enough. It's nice to make big batches of things and know you can use them all week long in different dishes. Um, and I'm, I'm dicing everything. I'm cutting it to a nice di diced bite size. I need, so you can see the proportions as I add them. I'm gonna grab a mixing bowl. Here it is. So I have got, I'll talk about it as I add it to the bowl. I've got some leftover rice. Um, the proportions, of course, like use the recipe to guide you, but don't get too caught up on that. If you really know you like one of these ingredients, um, celery for a little bit of crunch. So I had a grain or a bread, some celery for a crunch, some nuts, a nice soft, easy to eat nut. You could toast it if you want to. Um, some just very slowly sauteed onion. This happened off camera. Just some sauteed onion. Uh, cranberries, always good. Dried cranberries for a little bit of a zing. And some green apple for some little bites. Um, so I have, I have this big old bowl, but I'll bring it over to you. So I can tip it and you can see. I think um, something I would have done is made the celery a little bit smaller, but it will certainly work. I like the big apple bites because they're gonna grab onto the fork well. Um, and this is just a good mixture of some, some tart and savory um, ingredients that we are just going to simply, making sure my pan's not hot, it's not, pour into our squash. And remember our squash is half cooked. It was in the oven for 10 minutes already. Um, if you, speaking of catering this to your taste, if you like cheese, um, cheese is a really wonderful addition to stuffed squash. Um, I know it's an unpopular opinion, but I'm not a big cheese fan, but that's something you could add and toss into your mixture. Um, yeah, just a really simple, like choose what you like, use this as a guide, but don't feel like you need to stick to it. Um, here is, you'll see it when it comes out of the oven, but here it is. It's just a mound of that beautiful stuffing um, put into a partially cooked, um, delicata squash that's our little bowl that we're going to keep it in and it's going to go into the oven for another 10 minutes at 450 so it's a pretty hot oven and really all of these things are cooked or ready to eat um, we're just going to let the flavors um, meld and mix together um, and get and the squash get a little bit more cooked and caramelized and toasty so it's going into the oven And we'll keep an eye on it and probably see it in about 10 minutes. All right, we are ready to pull our stuffed delicata squash out of the oven. Oh, it's beautiful. Got nice and toasty, the ingredients on top. You can hear it sizzling. It's still cooking very carefully. Let me look at the time. That was only 10 more minutes that that was in there. 
and it was really like all of the ingredients that were cooked. I was using leftover um, rice, the celery just needs a little bit of cooking, the apple, those raw ingredients didn't need to be in the oven very long. We're really just letting the flavors meld. So I've got my beautiful stuffed squash here that's just like fork soft, ready. Remember with the delicata that you can um, eat the skin. So it's just like ready to bite right into this. Um, and here it is finished, very similar to what it looked like before it went in, but you can see there's a little bit more caramelization and toasting. Um, this is the delicata squash. So we did it three ways. We've got our stuffed squash here. Here is our microwave squash. I decided um, I did want to put this delicata in the microwave to see how long it took. It took in four minutes. It is very fork tender and ready um, for a little bit of butter and salt and pepper and just ready to bite right into um, easy to scoop out the insides or remember that you can eat the skin on delicata. And then we've got our little half moons, which are like falling apart. They're so tender, but I wouldn't call them mushy. Um, they were just tossed in a simple olive oil, salt and pepper. So here we've got our three ways to just simply cook a delicata squash. Um, and of course, always, um, you've probably got your handy salt and pepper. Um, I remember that I did not season with salt and pepper my stuffed squash. So it's something I'd want to do now um, to just finish it off. Ideally you do. You, um, in the recipe you'll see like blend those flavors in there when it's cooking, but sometimes you forget and then you just salt and pepper it at the end to taste and it works out almost just as well. So here we go. Three ways, three simple ways to eat delicata squash. Okay, I um, I did want to mention first, I was thinking sometimes like on film, I forget. I'm like, how do I cook this when a camera is pointed at me? I forget what I do at home. Um, so to, to use the little, using the stuffed squash as a vessel, I definitely would have put like a pad of butter on top of there. And I mentioned salt and pepper at the end. That's something that I forgot, but that's how I would have like finished that off and scooping the insides um, and mixing the meat of the squash like, into that stuffing is how I would have actually like sat down and consumed the dish. Um, I see some questions. The first one is about, or they're all about storing um, winter squash. And so winter squash, you can store for um, the length of winter. It's like a two to four month um, period of time. You wanna store them in a cool, and dry place. Um, ideally, they're like, they're up on a shelf if you're able to do that rather than like setting them on the floor. Um, I honestly, I have mine um, in just a canvas like produce bag. I've got a bag of winter squash that's just like in an underneath cupboard, kind of similar to how I would store potatoes or sweet potatoes and onions. I've just got a bag that has a couple winter squash um, in it, they've, before you purchase a uh, winter squash at the farmer's market, it's already, most of them have already had a little bit of time to cure. I know, especially like butternut squash, um, it's a couple weeks be from um, picking and harvesting those before you want to eat them. So they've, they've had that curing time, by the time they end up in your hands, they're ready to consume. But if you want to store them, you just, you want to keep them in a cool, dry place like you know 50 degrees is the ideal temperature so maybe that's um in a basement or under a cupboard and you just you want to keep them dry um mostly they they might get some soft spots and if the soft spots get too out of control you might have to toss that squash um or if you catch it you might be able to just cut off a little bit and eat the rest of it um as far as the other part of the question is keeping them in the refrigerator. Um, you don't need to store a winter squash in the refrigerator. I would store it in a refrigerator if I had cut it open. So if I was preparing only um, half of a delicata squash, I would wrap up the other portion um, and put that in my drawer in the refrigerator. I know that um, 
the maybe not the fix it fair specifically, but wing has got a line on a wonderful um, piece of collateral that tells you which drawers in the refrigerator um, to keep different produce items in. And I love that. I use it all the time. It's something stuck to my refrigerator door that um, helps me keep, keep track of the storage temperatures and the humidity, the low humidity and the high humidity drawers. Um, what else have we got? I would have, I would, um, Beth also asks about different types of squash having different storage lives. And um, I don't know for sure. I would guess that the ones with thicker skins might be able to store a little bit longer. But um, really, that two to four month range, they're meant to be harvested in fall or winter and make it through the winter um, is how you'd want to keep them. I thank you, Beth, also dropped in there um, a shout out to the Culinary Breeding Network. They um, have a wonderful event going on right now. It's called the Winter Vegetable Sagra, and credit where credit is due. Um, for these demos, we are very much following their schedule of the Winter Vegetable Sagra. So if you head on over to Culinary Breeding Network, they are celebrating winter squash um, all week long. And they've got TED style talks with farmers and growers and seed breeders. Um, there's a recipe demo, I believe it was this morning, but all of those features are archived. You could learn a lot more about winter squash. There is also a wonderful website that the Culinary Breeding Network developed a couple years ago. It's just eatwintersquash.com. Um, and some of my favorite recipes that I just go to see year after year. Um, when it's winter squash season around there. There's a really great um, butternut squash recipe that I make quite often. Um, trying to think of what else I want to share. Oh, and another question has popped up. It's where to find info on winter farmers markets. So I think that the, the best like comprehensive list, because there are different organizations um, running different farmers markets. You want to find um, somewhere where they've all been compiled. So the, the doubleuporegon.org website, even though it is meant to help you find farmers markets that have double up food bucks, um, most, I cannot say all, but most of the farmers markets in Oregon um, have the double up food buck program. So they've got an interactive map on their website and it is a comprehensive list of the state's um, farmers markets by season. So it'll tell you which ones are open in the winter. And then it's always fun um, to check out if you're, hmm, I can't say if you're traveling, when we get to travel again across the state um, to make it a part of your trip to visit farmers markets, especially when you visit um, smaller communities, it's always a great place to check out. So the DoubleUpOregon.org is a good list of where to find farmers markets across the state. Um, and we've got another one. Yes, the OFMA website. Thank you. Someone dropped into the chat of OFMA's website. So the Oregon Farmers Market Association keeps a good list of the seasonal, the seasonal markets, including winter or what they call holiday markets. Who else is out there? What do you want to know about? What's next? Great question. Um, so this is only our second of six demonstrations. Um, we're doing them there every other Tuesday at two o'clock. So the next one is coming up on Tuesday, February 9th. And I'm really excited to say that we've got a guest farmer who will be joining us and a guest chef, and we will be celebrating um, all things mushroom. Mushroom is a wonderful um, winter vegetable, but something you can find year round in the farmer's market, but I specifically tend to think of it as a fall and winter food. There are some markets, um, or sorry, some mushrooms, the ones that are being foraged um, in the wild, that fall and winter is their time to shine. So we'll be 
is celebrating mushrooms with um, Riley. We'll get a farm tour from Riley at Mindful Mushrooms. And we've got a guest chef who's joining us. Um, Mandy King um, is a hot food vendor at the PSU Farmer's Market. Money Bowl is her business. Um, who will be preparing a dish that I'll keep a secret for now, but a nice one pot dish that features mushrooms. Um, and we'll do a simple saute. And then from there, um, we have more, we have more guest chefs that are getting, that are getting lined up and will feature some more vegetables. So every other Tuesday, we'll be here celebrating, um, all the wonderful finds at the farmer's market and you can sign up to, you can register. So you'll get an email reminder, um, to join us on zoom, or you can always catch us on Facebook live. Um, keep reaching out and asking questions even after this live event is over. Um, Portland Farmers Market and Cook First, we're here for you and happy to help get more vegetables onto your plate. So thank you, everyone. Heather, thank you so much for being here today. Really appreciate it. Um, it was a great demo. It was so fun. And the last demonstration I had to go immediately and buy Brussels sprouts. And now I need to go get some delicata squash. So um, thank you everybody for joining uh, both in the workshop and live. Uh, we'll have recordings of this session along with all of our other sessions up on our website. And uh, you can visit our website to uh, sign up to receive our e-newsletter, which comes out about twice a month and keeps you updated as well. Um, if you're in the Zoom workshop, you'll uh, see a survey if you fill that out. Uh, it helps us to make sure that uh, we're doing the best that we can with these workshops. And you'll also have the opportunity to enter into a raffle uh, for prizes as well as thanks. Heather, thank you again and Cook First and Portland Farmers Market. Um, we will see you in a couple of weeks. Of course, thank you. We are happy to be here. Great, thank you all. Take care. Thank you.